Okay, how are we doing? The oil is spreading into the marina. The boat owners are threatening to sue the city. The dock workers won't evacuate, and I broke three damn nails dialing. I have a manicurist on 24-hour call. Does she do acrylics? Because if she doesn't do them right, they get all built up thick like swollen toes. Oh, I hate that. Me too. Girl, could we get back to the disaster? You look like Big Bird. <laughs> oh, Roger, it's such a crime. I used to go swimming in that river. Now all that's left is floating slime. Yeah, it's a tragedy. And now I don't know where I'm going to train for the nude Olympics. <laughs> all that purple sludge. Purple sludge? The crude oil is black. Roger, send Victor out to this bill site to get a sample. Anna Maria, we're going to need at least two more skimmer boats and a dozen crewmen to keep that spill from reaching shore. Oh, no problem. In old Havana, I learned two things. Spotty cake and how to attract able-bodied seamen. <laughs> Nude Olympic? Yes, I'm, I'm looking for a partner or a synchronized swimmer. <laughs> Interested? Let me get back to you. I have a plan of action. I want you okay. Terrific. Someone is moving quickly around here. Let me see. Pony rides, trip to the circus, dinner at Humpty Dumpty. Yep, this ought to keep the oil spill busy. My daughter's flying in for the weekend. Now, you know, I only get to see her maybe once a year. I want this to be a weekend she will always remember. Now, that sounds like fun, don't you think? Roger, how do I say this? Seventeen-year-olds don't fit well on ponies. <laughs> Their knees drag on the ground. Liz, the tanker captain is refusing to speak to you until you've spoken to his corporate spokesperson. Okay, what's the name of the corporate spokesperson? Sphinx. But Sphinx can't speak until his superior specify what he's supposed to spell out about the spill. Then who am I supposed to speak to? If the spokesperson hasn't spoken to his superiors to see if he's supposed to speak. Hard to say. <laughs> Roger, listen, we'll talk about Sarah later. For now, please just find out who that tanker is registered to. You got it. Thank you. Maybe if I bought something special for Sarah, like a watch. Or, or diamond earrings. When I was 17, my father, the general, gave me a gift which I shall never forget. What was it? Costa Rica. <laughs> Lise, I located two more skimmer boats, but the crew is demanding double rates in advance. We can't afford that. We've already spent a fortune on this cleanup. All right, then. Give me ten minutes and a body stocking, and I will give you three men in a canoe who will lay down their lives. <laughs> Let's hope that won't be necessary. Wanda, please call Treasury. Check the balance in the city environmental account. Liz! That was the White House. They heard about the oil spill, and you will never guess who is winging his way to our aid. Not. Not. Yes. Vice President J. Danforth Quill. <laughs> I'm planning a gala dinner in his honor. Gloria, no festivities. This is a vice presidential disaster visit. 
Liz, don't be redundant. It's Johnny. I got that sample you asked for. Victor, all you had to do was skim a little off the surface, not jump in after it. Sorry, being close to the water does something to me. Did you read Hemingway's Old Man in the Sea? Yes. Well, this is what he was wearing when he wrote it. Victor, just go down to the lab and leave the sample. No need. I already know what it is. It's hair oil. How could you possibly know that? If you grew up in my family, you wouldn't ask. My father was a poor barber. Many times, that's all we had to eat. You know, there's something so romantic about the sea. A tanker full of hair oil. Flipper may have a point. The only pink tanker in existence is registered to a local corporation. Babette Cosmetics. Harbor Authority says the tanker failed its bulkhead stress test, but somebody at City Hall gave it a waiver to enter the river. Who would issue a waiver for a defective tanker? Now, let's think. <laughs> it had to be somebody corrupt, immoral, and I'm guessing chubby. Ken, I'll kill him. Oil spill. No, I don't think I can let you off the hook for this one. Oh, God, yes. Spill anything you want. Just make me cry. Ken, oh. oh. what in the... My, my, another Kodak moment. Uh. Yes, yeah, so, well, I think we've all suffered enough. I know I have. I think it's best we take this unfortunate oil spill and put it behind us. Johnny, I'd like you to meet Bobette Croquette. One of the most responsible business leaders I've ever had the pleasure to touch. Fondle, a deal with. Babette Croquette, as in Babette Cosmetics? Oh, so you heard about me. I'm not surprised. I do wonders with aging women like yourself. <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, let me get this picture straight. She gives you a quick rub down and you let her off the hook for the oil spill. Come on, Gianni. I wouldn't let her off the hook because of ten of the best minutes I've ever spent on my desk. <laughs> I let her off the hook because I'm on her board of directors. Isn't that a conflict of interest? Do I look conflicted? Dear, please let me assure you that Bobbitt Cosmetic is going to do the right thing. So you'll be paying for the cleanup? Well, let's just go ahead of ourselves. First, we have to reassure the public that everything is okay. But everything is not okay. And that's exactly why she's sending in an emergency PR team. They're going to do radio spots, design a TV campaign. And in a couple of weeks, they're going to declare the river clean. <laughs> and you say big business is heartless. Miss Crooked, the river is being destroyed. Your company has a moral and legal obligation to pay for this cleanup. Well, I'm not so sure my lawyer is going to agree with you. I got it in writing from Kenny that I can do anything I want and I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> Is that true, Ken? Please. Well, it's an oversimplification. Babette can do anything she wants and doesn't have to pay for it. <laughs> you sold out the city so you could be on her board of directors? Yeah, if you want to read that into it. I hereby sell out the city so I can be on her board of directors. Liz, Treasury says we've used up the entire environmental fund. <gasps> and the spill is moving toward the wildlife sanctuary. Rent three more skimmers. Right. Hire 50 beach workers and get them down to that sanctuary on the double. Right. Hey, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You authorize any more funds, they're going to come out of your pocket. I'll risk it. Come on, Gianni. When are you going to be on the side of the winners? You know, I bet if you're real nice to Babette, she'll put you on her board of directors. Yes, I need someone to replace Kenny. Yeah, what? Well, I found out that you took a bribe. Well, yeah, from you. Yeah, but I didn't catch me, I caught you. <laughs> Kenny, I'm sorry you're so bad for my image. 
Besides, you're a little bit too old for me. <laughs> God, Johnny. I've been used. I feel so... so empty inside. Oh, it's lunchtime. Clean up is getting very expensive. 80000 for skimmers, 40000 for booms, and MasterCard called. You have exceeded your limit by $180,000. <laughs> and at the Duck Pond, they don't take American Express. <laughs> Raj, please, check out Babette's assets. I need to find her weak spots. Can do. Good. Liz! Great news. The vice president made an on-site inspection of the oil spill. And he said that even though there's a lot of oil in the water, there's still more water than oil. It was very encouraged. <laughs> Did he say anything about federal assistance? Yes. He said that because of budget cuts, the Environmental Protection Agency can no longer afford to spend all its time on all these environmental problems. <laughs> so what will the EPA be doing? Weddings, mostly, and a few bar mitzvahs. <laughs> Liz, I'm having a tough time with this. Roger, you had to be willing to play hardball. Come on, Liz. Sarah's 17. She's not going to want to play catch. <laughs> Roger, could we please stay on the oil spill? Now, look. I think if we impound the tanker, then we can sell it and pay for the cleanup. Why not? Can't do it. Can Why? sign the waiver so we don't have the right to appropriate their property. <sighs> well, we've got to be able to do something. Well, I have one idea. I buy her a car. <laughs> Babette? Oh, we're back on that again? <laughs> Liz, the oil spill's gonna be here for a long time. My daughter's only coming for the weekend. Roger. Listen. Why are you so nervous about seeing Sarah? No, no, no. You have always had a good relationship with her. Yeah, sure. When she was a kid. Now she's almost an adult. God, Lizzie. She's growing up, and I'm not there to see it happen. Roger. Don't you think you're being a little hard on yourself? When she went out on her first date, I wasn't there to wait up all night. Broke her leg skiing. I wasn't there to hold her hand. She played Maria in West Side Story. I didn't even know she could sing. Apparently, neither did the reviewers. <laughs> she needed me to tell her she was terrific. And I wasn't there. Pretty soon, she just won't need me for anything. One thing I've learned, they always need you for something. Money, mostly. <laughs> Roger, come on. Stop worrying. You'll spend time with her, that's all. Hang out. Maybe even talk to her. Mm, terrific idea. About what? About you. Yeah, let her know who you are. Sure. Yeah, we'll blow some money at the track. <laughs> Shoot some craps behind a warehouse. Then we'll hunt down the guy who repossessed my gremlin. You know, quality time. <laughs> Come on, there's more to you than that. Listen, you wouldn't be this concerned if you weren't a terrific father. Well, it's just that I only have one weekend to help me face the rest of the year without her. And I've got to make it count. Hey, you will. Listening to you, I almost believe it. Believe it. Okay, Gianni. I'm going to give you a chance to make up for the damage that you've done. <laughs> Ever since you got me kicked off of Babette's board, I have lost half of my tax-free income. Gianni, I have a beautiful woman and two loving kids to support. And then there's my wife and those leeches with braces. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, please, you got to help me find another source of income. Ken... Why don't you try earning what you make as deputy mayor? Oh, like I've got time to learn a whole new skill. <laughs> Miss Johnny, don't worry about security for the vice president. He's apparently going to have some servicemen around him whose identity I can't reveal. You mean the Secret Service? Oh, you know about that? <laughs> Well, anyway, these secret guys, you know what I mean. They put me on a special detail. Now, they said they wanted me to, quote, get lost. 
God, I love working with the feds. <laughs> well, if you need me, I'll be lost. I'll be sure to find you, Vic. Yeah, you can try. <laughs> Mom, I just came back from the oil spill. It was awful. It was worse than I thought. Come on in. All those ducks. We could hardly save any of them. One died right in my arms while I was trying to clean it. It had just swallowed too much oil. Oh, Pen, I'm sorry. I'm so angry. I want somebody to blame. I tried to lay it all on the cosmetic companies, but the Babettes of the world wouldn't exist without us. The hair oil users. <laughs> if we don't cut the demand, we're just going to have more and more of these spills. There is no safe way to transport hair oil. Sure, you could say build a pipeline. <laughs> but even they aren't completely accident-proof. Some of it is bound to get into the environment. It's us. We turned our back on the dry look, and now it's on our heads. <laughs> Honey, I don't want to say anything, but you lost your gloves. <laughs> the price you pay, Mom. Well, I'm going back out there. Maybe I can still save a few ducks. Penny, I'm proud of you. I called a buddy at the bank. He said the best biggest assets are the tanker and the hair oil. The tanker we can't seize and the oil we already have. Oh, boy, I just wish we could give it back to her. Please, our tanker trucks are filled with the gunk we pumped off the water, but we have no place to dump it. I'm thinking the river. <laughs> I'm thinking the bet's hot tub. Oh, Roger, nice thought. But that would be sinking to Babette's level. And there's no one here as base, immoral, and corrupt as she is. Hi. <laughs> Can anybody here forge the vice president's name on this letter of recommendation? No, 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 no. We can't. No, 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 no. We can't what? I uh, can't stoop to seeking revenge on Babette in a juvenile but entertaining manner. Raj, you know, just let's drop this whole idea. Please. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, you've got a chance for revenge, and you're going to wimp out because it's not nice? Ken, this is City Hall, not a frat house. We just want to find a way of returning a tanker truck full of smelly liquid crud to its rightful owner without causing her too much inconvenience. See, I would hate, for example, for someone to accidentally hook it up to the sprinkler system in her building and yell fire. You know what, Johnny? You're right. If there is one thing I've learned, it's that revenge profits no one. I mean, wasn't it uh, Decimus Junius Juvenal who said in 78 AD, revenge is always the delight of a Mean, weak, and petty mind. But what can I do? <laughs> I gotta be me. <laughs> okay, who's got the keys to the tanker truck? <laughs> Is that your resignation? Because we both are gonna need one if this scam backfires. No, it's a grocery list. I'm gonna do it right, Lizzie. I'm picking up Sarah tonight at the airport, and all we're going to do for the whole weekend is just hang out oh. and get to know each other. Oh, Jack, I'm impressed. Good. So, what are you cooking for dinner? All our favorites, at least the ones I can remember. Peanut butter sandwiches, chocolate milk, macaroni and cheese, and Fruit Loops. <laughs> I forgot how much we had in common. <laughs> is this your idea for Joe? Well, our first choice was the one about the priest, the rabbi, and the penguin. Hey, Slick. Didn't see a slide in. I was speaking to my spokesperson about this speech on the spill when the sprinkler exploded and splattered over me. No wonder she hired Spink. <laughs> you are going to pay for this mess. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, I will have to fly in my emergency PR team and do some TV spots. And then in about two weeks or so, we will declare you clean. <laughs> it's a good try, but it will not work. Oh, I know. You're covered by that waiver. Thanks to Ken, we cannot sue you, and we cannot confiscate your tanker. We have to turn it back over to you. 
Just as soon as we finish our report about the spill. A report? Oh, yes. You know, one of those slow, plodding, inefficient, endless government reports. You rang? <laughs> this is our only tanker. If you take it away, we are going to be wiped out. Ah, that'll be noted in the report. <laughs> Do you swim? We are going to pay for the cleanup. <laughs> There's something about the man in the uniform. Good news. The wind shifted and blew the slick away from the bird sanctuary. They're saying they should have it mopped up in a couple of days. Yeah. In two weeks, no one will remember it. Until it seeps into our groundwater. Right. Your MasterCard is paid up, and they have upped your limit to $2.6 million. <laughs> Great. I can buy those oven mitts I've been pining for. <laughs> Roger, it's your daughter calling. Great. She's here. Hi, Junebug. You're playing in early? Oh, you're not? No. Of course I understand. Yeah. No, it's no big deal. We were just going to hang out. Uh-huh. Well, you'll have a lot more fun skiing. No? No, nah, really. I'll see you next year. Yeah. Now, if you need me, just call. Mm hmm. I love you, honey. Bye. Boy, I'm glad I'm, glad I'm out of that one. And don't have to deal with unfolding the day bed and everything. I was just thinking. I I have not had macaroni and cheese and chocolate milk and Fruit Loops in the longest time. I make the best peanut butter sandwiches. A little beluga, a little onion, some skippy. You guys don't have to do this, you know. Yeah, we know. Come on. You got a swimming pool? You want to hear something funny? You want to see it too? Then don't miss Sydney, the hot new comedy starring Valerie Bertinelli. But if you want to see it and want to hear it and you don't want to miss it, pay attention. Because now Sydney is on one half hour earlier at 8, 7 Central and Mountain, Wednesdays on CBS.